Do you know that patients with normal kidney function magnesium supplements should be continued for one to two days after the magnesium level normalizes? And do you know also that magnesium levels do not correlate well with total body magnesium stores as the majority of magnesium is intracellular? And do you know as well that up to 50% of the infused IV magnesium dose is excreted in the urine? We're going to discuss all of this in today's videos, how to properly replace magnesium and avoid common pitfalls. If you would like to receive a summary of this video please subscribe to my substack link is provided below let's start normal magnesium level is 1.7 to 2.1 milligram per deciliter and again you may find other sources indicating slightly higher or lower values of normal magnesium and again this applies to the severity of magnesium here i'm considering mild hypomagnesemia if magnesium 1.5 to 1.7 moderate 1.1 to 1.4 and severe hypomagnesemia is equal or less than 1 milligram per deciliter again other sources may define this severity and normal magnesium level using different numbers but it will be close to these numbers it's very important also to know the relation and association between hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia the reason of this because what causes hypokalemia or potassium loss causes also magnesium loss that's why 40 to 60 percent of hypomagnesemic patients have associated hypokalemia please always check potassium level in hypomagnesemia and the opposite is true in hypokalemia always check magnesium level also there is association between hypomagnesemia and hypocalcemia low magnesium level can cause hypoparathyroidism parathyroid hormone resistance and and vitamin D deficiency. Severe hypomagnesemia, which is magnesium equal or less than one milligram per deciliter, can lead to symptomatic hypocalcemia. Also, there is another term I want you to be aware of called normal magnesemic hypocalcemia, that there is normal magnesium level, but the intracellular magnesium stores are depleted, leading to hypocalcemia. So please always check calcium level when checking magnesium level, and the opposite is true. Let's go quickly over the symptoms and signs signs of hypomagnesemia mainly neuromuscular and cardiovascular and neuromuscular i want you to mainly think of tremor tetany mainly seizures and convulsions weakness apathy delirium and coma and this can be non-specific other causes can cause it but again when you see this check magnesium level and these symptoms usually happens mainly in severe hypomagnesemia cardiovascular widening of the qrs and peaking of t waves similar to hyperkalemia but this can happen with moderate magnesium depletion widening of the pr interval diminution of t waves and atrial and ventricular arrhythmias mainly remember torsades de pointis but all ventricular arrhythmias can happen with severe hypomagnesemia any patients with hypomagnesemia should have should get a 12 leads ekg and should be placed on telemetry monitoring in the hospital Let's go over the available oral magnesium preparation in the USA. These preparation oral preparation have poor bioavailability. It's estimated to be around 33% and their main side effects is GI discomfort and diarrhea and remember magnesium is used sometimes as laxatives now oral magnesium supplements can be either sustained release or instant release sustained release that means slow absorption less GI side effects and diarrhea because of that and these are first line if oral replacements indicated now instant release of course quick absorption so more GI side effects and they consider second line so always we think of using sustained release first now the available sustained release we have magnesium chloride they have 64 to 71.5 milligram of elemental magnesium and magnesium lactate contain 84 milligram of elemental magnesium instant release is the famous magnesium oxide they come in 400 milligram tablets and they have 241 milligram elemental magnesium and of course IV magnesium in the USA we have magnesium sulfate the main concern when we use magnesium sulfate is hypermagnesemia elevated magnesium level particularly if we give it to patients with renal failure so we need close monitoring here and the IV magnesium unlike potassium can be given as a bolus and can be given as slow infusion it's much safer compared to IV potassium supplements this is a very important slide I want you to pay attention here that whenever we have hypomagnesemia the body stimulate more magnesium reabsorption mainly in the thick ascending lip of loop of Henle 
whenever this magnesium level is low as we said magnesium reabsorption now when you give this very important when you give magnesium supplements whether oral and IV there will be a quick transit rise in magnesium level in the serum so this will cut off the stimulation of magnesium reabsorption here which means up to 50% of magnesium supplements that we give will be excreted in the urine because the signal, because the quick transit rise in magnesium level in the serum will be sensed, will lead to cut off the signal to enhance or stimulate the magnesium absorption here. So more magnesium will be wasted in the urine. Also important to know that the slower the magnesium is given, the slower the rise in magnesium level in the serum, the less inhibition of magnesium reabsorption here and the less magnesium excreted in the urine. This loss of magnesium in the urine is prominent when we give IV magnesium because of the prominent rise in the magnesium level in the serum, the transit one, then less in magnesium oxide, the instant release oral, and least in the sustained release forms. That's what we like them uh, whenever oral sub replacements indicated. Now magnesium replacement, we have IV replacement and oral replacement. Magnesium IV replacement indicated whenever there is any EKG changes regardless of magnesium level whether mild, moderate, or severe, but mainly this happens in severe hypomagnesemia. If there is any symptoms, regardless of the level, if there is severe hypomagnesemia, whether symptomatic or not, or if the patient is unable to tolerate oral magnesium because of GI side effects. Now, oral replacement indicated in mild to moderate hypomagnesemia and asymptomatic patients. And sometimes they are indicated for mildly symptomatic patients, uh, especially if I do not want to give IV magnesium for a reason or another. Now, emergency situation like EKG changes including torsades depointes or seizures we give magnesium sulfate 2 gram IV over 2 to 5 minutes a bolus right and repeat if needed times 1 so this is emergency situation now if there is symptomatic but no emergency situation and mainly this happen in severe hypomagnesemia the level is equal or less than 1 we give magnesium sulfate 1 to 2 grams IV over 30 minutes, not over 2 to 5 minutes as we expect. This is over 30 minutes. 20 to 30 minutes is acceptable. Then 4 to 8 grams infused. This is important. Infused slowly over the next 12 to 24 hours. And this is what most of us don't do. That will lead to a slower rise in the magnesium level and less inhibition of magnesium reabsorption as we explained and less of this magnesium will be excreted in the urine and more sustained magnesium supplementations. Now severe hypomagnesemia who are asymptomatic there is no bolus needed we give four to eight gram of magnesium sulfate magnesium sulfate always given in gram if I say milligram it's a mistake always in gram but infused again slowly over 12 to 24 hours. Now normal magnesiumic hypocalcemia hopefully we'll talk about it when we talk about hypocalcemia we give magnesium sulfate 4 gram IV infused again over 12 to 24 hours slowly for three to five days and we stop once the calcium level is normalized or hypermagnesemia develops severe asthma and COPD exacerbation remember IV magnesium can be given here to help with that we give two grams IV of magnesium sulfate infused over 20 minutes and remember magnesium also IV magnesium given in eclampsia and preeclampsia with severe features again this mainly if you are in the ED or take, uh, taking care of obst obstetric patients magnesium sulfate 4 to 6 gram IV over 15 to 30 minutes followed by continuous infusion of 1 to 2 grams every hour times 24 hours after delivery of course you need to monitor magnesium level and signs of hypermagnesemia closely now how about mild to moderate hypomagnesemia and asymptomatic we pick sustained release first line of course magnesium chloride or magnesium lactate we give two taps daily or instant release again magnesium oxide this is second line if we cannot give sustained release or if it's not available 800 to 1600 milligram daily in divided doses like 400 milligram twice daily or 800 milligram twice daily something like that and remember main side effects will be diarrhea please don't forget to replace potassium and calcium if hypocalcemia and hypokalemia exist and treat underlying cause of hypomagnesemia if identified remember renal failure patient whether acute or chronic we reduce the doses we mentioned by 50 percent to avoid hypermagnesemia the kidney is the only organ that regulate magnesium level that's why it's important that we reduce the dose in renal failure patients monitoring check magnesium six to 
12 hours after finishing giving the magnesium supplements. Do not check it sooner because if you do check it sooner, it will be artificially high. Remember when we give magnesium supplements, there will be a quick transit rise in magnesium level when we give it the magnesium supplements. Daily magnesium level may be acceptable in stable patients, so you don't have to do it every 6 or 12 hours. You can do it daily. But with IV magnesium, I always check it 6 to 12 hours. And this may be acceptable with oral magnesium. Very important, serum magnesium level rise quickly with therapy, but the intracellular stores take longer to replete. That's why magnesium level does not correlate with intracellular magnesium. And for that reason, continue magnesium supplements for 1 to 2 days after magnesium level normalize if no renal failure and as long as hypermagnesemia does not develop. Now, the IV magnesium magnesium can be given initially then transition into oral for these one once the magnesium level normalized for the next one to two days patients receiving iv magnesium should be monitored for hypermagnesemia remember hypermagnesemia symptoms a reflexia and respiratory depression so you sh they should be placed on telemetry and pulse oximetry especially if you're giving iv magnesium to renal failure patients very important to remember that in the end if you found this video useful please give it a like share it with your colleagues and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so remember Remember to receive a summary of this video, you can subscribe to my Substack, the link is provided below. Thanks for watching and see you soon.